the two works that I have in the show are um, from a, a series that I did with my teenage daughter. Um, she is in the space where she is coming into her own and, you know, becoming a woman. And it was good, you know, I mean, it's obviously interesting as a mother and as an artist to see that and to see the rebellion and to see this journey, you know, and, um, and you know, to capture it. You know, I think a lot of times we always look out, outside the family, outside the people, you know, that are close to you, especially in an African context. We don't like to tell you know, stories that are too close to home. People shouldn't know our business. But um, for me, this was like an automatic thing. And, you know, even in the pictures that I portray, you know, she talks about, you know, getting piercings as a way of just kind of self-expression and this, you know, freedom. And I think some of my favorite moments are like, um, you know, there are artists that I've worked with who's, who I've seen kind of grow over the time and I, I've always kind of admired their work. And then when I was thinking about this show and I said, oh, let me, you know, let me, you know, you know, include this artist and that artist, and then sitting with the work and you know, kind of doing the selections, and then saying, "Hey, here's this theme about family and identity," and it it comes out so strong. And then this idea of like, you know, women's um, our hair, you know, as African women, like it's super important. Like even black women, but African women, our hair is like a huge part of our identity. And you know, I think those aha moments of you know themes emerging even through the work, I think for me was really important because at first you're like. Mm, I don't know, but then when you, you know, when you start putting it together, like which work should go where, and then you start even myself making, you know, discoveries, you know, I think that's exciting for me as well. Um, so this whole process was also a growth process for me and, you know, kind of, um, you know, taking a step back and looking at this work also afresh and, um, and kind of, you know, what, how it spoke to me, but also how it spoke to each other. The first photographs that we see of, 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 of Africans are, are not taken by Africans. Cameras did not exist in those days for us. And so our history is, is often told through, um, through a white lens, a colonial lens. Um, when I was doing this show, I um, um, had previously worked with um, archives, um, with the Bristol Archives, and so got really curious about you know, what else was in, those, you know, in these archival images. So I decided to go to the Kenya National Archives to see what I could find. One of the first photos I found, which um, is here in the show, was women standing in a line, you know, um, they're naked, they don't look like they've given any type of consent to be in those photos, they're not happy, you know, they look like subjects, you know, they look like, um, you know, um, they look like they are the anthropological, you know, like that's, that's the reason those photos were taken, for the anthropological and kind of trying to classify, you know, so they just look like they look like people in someone else's story when really the story should be theirs. And so part of me looking at the journey, because the images go from, you know, that early time, you know, almost until kind of independence. Um, and so there is a change in terms of how, what the images look like, what the women in the images look like. And so there is a historical significance in those colonial images, you know, we're oral people. Uh, most of our stories are told orally, but, you know, these photos give us some sort of context. Um, but I think, the work, um, the work that is the contemporary work that is in the show, um, and both kind of, you know, give us a nuanced view of what, you know, where where you know the history of women, African women, um, particularly East African women, um, you know, how the roles of women have changed kind of in, in society um, until now. My name is Tandiwe Moreau and I am one of the photographers showing at the CC Nihau exhibition by Sarah Weiswa. And of course I had to visit, so I am here today and I wanted to tell you a little bit about my work and what the symbolism is behind the pieces. So this series is called the Camel Series and it records my experience as a woman living in a male-dominated culture um, and, and exploring the feelings that that left me with. This this project began as a love letter to myself to affirm what was unique about being a woman even as I struggled to find my identity in a community or in an industry that was um, filled with men, so photography industry. In Camo, I often felt that I was invisible as a woman. I struggled with feeling like wondering if I added value to my community by doing something that wasn't traditional or typical for women. And so I began creating this series of photographs to affirm the things that I felt I disregarded and many women disregard about being a woman. Um, while my subjects blend into their background, it's symbolic of that feeling of being invisible or disappearing in society. If I was just a perfect wife, a perfect mother, 
and still struggling with the feeling of wanting to be more, which in my case was a photographer. <clears throat> So all this is one photograph. It is not manipulated. Um, it's not a collage. I design the clothing that the subjects wear, and then I work with a hairstylist to do the hair. The glasses are made from everyday objects, which pays homage to the Kenyan way of living. Creative recycling is something we all do and we see everywhere. And I wanted to, to highlight that interesting cultural habit that we have. So for example, here her glasses are made from spools of thread, here they're made from nail files, and the list goes on and on. I've done bottom cuts, I've done sewing needles, I've done fake nails. Many, many things have made the accessories. Um, so this is a camo series, and it is such a powerful tribute to being a woman in East Africa. Women over centuries have been socialized to be this kind of glue, social glue, to kind of know what's happening. You know, we're the ones who are sitting at the corner saying, did you hear about so-and-so? But it's not because we don't care, it's because we do care and we need to have that conversation within a society. So I do think that when women photograph, there's a, there's a connection between the subject that I think, you know, I don't want to slam men, but I think that men are more technical. There's a technical aspect about you know, there's really fantastic male photogra uh, photographers, but, you know, they're talking about how the angle of this, that, and the other, and I think the women are more intuitive about trying to find, at least for me, I will, I will lie to my subject and say, oh, the light is not good, you know, I'm really testing, I'm not sure my eyes, so... And then there's a point where they just kind of relax and their arms go down and they turn, and that's a shot. And I get it, you know, because I, I want to get them. I don't want to get that act that we put on for social media. I don't want the selfie. I don't want the, the pretense. I want you, the truth. So, and I think that's a very feminine thing. I'm, you know, would go to visit a relatives and you sit down and before they bring out the tea and the mandazis or whatever, they would get all the photo albums and they would put them and you would, you know, that's your chance to go through their history, you know but it was physical images. And somebody said that they're more fragile, but I think that they're less fragile. I think that digital media is more fragile because we have nothing to hold on to. I, you know, so one of the things, as I've been looking at these pictures, I'm just saying, why are we looking on Instagram? Why aren't we finding a way of doing this where we see images how they were supposed to be seen. I, I appreciate the digital. I appreciate um, how the digital media has allowed all of us to become photographers. Um, because then we would all need dark rooms and we would all need this if we're doing analog. But I do think that it's taken away because that ability to look at the textures on paper, I'm printing, I'm, I'm gonna find a way to print a lot of my images, especially the portraits I take of my kids. I want, in fact, I'm thinking now of doing a series that will be printed. I usually get this a lot. A lot of people may confuse my prints to be painted or maybe done digitally, uh, the digital illustrations and all that. And they think this is because of how we choose colors, how the sets are usually like, the textures that are involved in the work, and the concepts behind the work, and how I'm editing. I love editing my work with a lot of grains. And right now I've been obsessed with this uh, editing style, which is like forming an illusion and where you can't see one static image. And so playing around with all these tools in editing and on set, give um, some sort of illusion sometimes that this isn't exactly photography or you can't see the photography in it at first. I think this is coming back to me using the camera as a paintbrush. So with that artistic uh, lens or that the thought of I want this to come out like an art piece or like a painting at first glance, I very much intentionally now you like emphasize some details or some aspects of the work. It's a black and white series uh, that is focused on women and girls 
and so it was more about highlighting features in people that are not necessarily deemed as beautiful or pretty. I wanted to show that. I also wanted to bring that retro, old school vibe, as you can see. Um, so, because I think it's so beautiful and timeless and classic. I like going back, looking at old photos and how fashion was classic. It's interesting how the old fashion is making a comeback and people now are wearing dresses or fashion and styles from way back. And so that was mostly my inspiration. Find a nexus between the old and the new and merge it together. One of the important things for me is I think as women, we see each other differently. So it's different with how a man would photograph a, a woman and how women would photograph a woman, a fellow woman. And so for me, that's very important. So bringing fashion and also me being a woman, I feel like I see my fellow women more intrinsically and so for me it was important to connect fashion and also uplift women in a way. Um, there is a rise of fashionistas and fashion in the Nairobi scene and I'm still looking for ways how I can capture that and maybe archive it for future generations just as we are looking at these photographs people in later years we'll be looking at this and be like, wow, okay, so this is how they used to dress like.